Hello ladies and gentlemen, as always, I'm your host, Airsoft Al, and today I will be talking about my loadout for the two-player Airsoft Club's Star Wars Rebel game. And, well, why not go ahead and get into it? To you, Outside Owl! Here it is, ladies and gentlemen, in all its glory out here in the outdoors. So, you're probably wondering exactly what am I rocking fru and fru, and what's the backstory for this loadout? Well, ladies and gentlemen, the backstory for this loadout is that basically I was out and about in some, I'm basically some lowly PMC who was out and about doing some patrol, and the next thing I know, I'm getting frickin' beamed up Scotty to the Star Wars universe with the kit I have on. And the kit I got on is, of course, this lovely little thing, which was donated by my buddy Joseph, a uh, different Joe, not Rob, but uh, Joseph out of Mississippi, who is a Mandalorian cosplayer and a Gunner cosplayer slash Brotherhood of Steel cosplayer. So let's just go from head to toe. What do I got down below? <laughs> Instead of going head to toe, I'm going toe to head. So down below, I've got, of course, some nice... You know, blue jeans, of course, with some nice jungle boots on my knees. And this is actually pretty new. This is actually a gift from my buddy Patrick. These are some M81 Woodland knee pads. So these are actually something I'm going to be rocking because my knees have been messed up a few times. Well, not only bad messed up, just, you know, precautionary thing. Going up, of course, we've got some Wrangler, lovely Wrangler, button-up long sleeve. And uh, on my hands, we've got some basic hard-knuckle gloves that I found while cleaning a house. On my chest, we have a basic admin pouch from some descript company. But again, this is the Matrix Molly Vest, which a review will be coming on talking about this. And of course, uh, unlike its actual original neck protector, which had Molly all the way around the neck protector, I went with the plain neck protector from the original pre-made vest, uh, Matrix vest. Going down, of course, we have some multi-cam mag pouches, and then, of course, some M81 mag pouches here, Molly as well. I've got two of these here, giving me four magazines. This is a double stack, so basically, uh, six, eight, ten. I've got ten magazines here. Uh, these are the basic three setup for front patches like this. Now, there is some actual Velcro under the admin pouch. I don't know if I want to just have the admin pouch, or not have the admin pouch, or have the admin pouch, let me know in the comment section down below if you want this. That way it's, uh, kind of gives that PMC look almost. Going up from there, of course, I have the Amazon face protector. I don't remember what company makes this, but I have had this, and this thing has saved my face and teeth so many times. But going from there, we have, of course, some Harbor Freight eye protection, yellow tinted, but I also have some clear tinted as well. So that way, uh, this is basically, the yellow tint's basically for, like, this low light almost. And uh, again, it's basically for that. Now going to my head, we have, of course, a Emerson Mitch 2002 helmet. I've got some arc rail here. Um, I might not have it on there. I've got a GoPro... NVG mount right here. This is full metal. This is a birthday gift. I will be, of course, doing a video on this, uh, a review on it after, of course, the event, which taking off my helmet, of course, I can basically show you guys a little better, more or less kind of everything that's been, uh, I've got going on and kind of talk better so I'm not as impaired with my face and eye protection. Now, in terms of the guns and gear I'll be taking, the primary arms is where I'll definitely be having fun with that. The primary, of course, being my g g combat machine that I have not taken out to the field in a good long while, actually. As you can see, the g g combat machine is still in its SBR form of 10 inches of a 10-inch barrel. Uh, I have, of course, have replaced the triangular front side I did have on this, Back to its original flip-up gas uh, mock gas port here. I have, of course, a uh, rail sling mount here for Picatinny. I have the Fiatchi laser or, or the light holder right here. I've got the Fiatchi pressure pad here, and of course this lovely little optic here that was actually given to me by my buddy Mister OT and uh, or OT Mister whichever one, and it actually is a very lovely little red dot. I actually do legitimately like this. I do get a clear sight picture over this. And the cool part is that with this bit of Picatinny here, I can actually put the run cam on there and actually am able to, once again, record the run cam. Uh, another thing, of course, that I decided to basically be like, what if 
Call of Duty Weapon Bench. And this is basically what I got. I have the Magpul MOE fixed stock here. I've got an A2 style pistol grip here. I've got Magpul trigger guard here. Basic mag release. A Magpul AFG here so I can actually shoulder this thing and activate the light switch. But the other thing is that I also have, of course, Picatinny camera mount here so I can actually have the selfie camera. Because this game is going from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. Meaning that, yes, it will be a night game, the reason for the flashlight. And I will get to that in a bit, but there is, of course, the backup gun, or my daytime gun, as I'm calling it. But before I even get to that, which will be a decision for you guys, you're probably wondering how I'm going to be doing a night game. How am I going to be doing, really, anything? Well, that's where the cool thing comes in, and where those donations I keep uh, whoring myself out for comes in as well. Because you see, with the donations, especially a donation from an author who I actually review and am now friends with Merc, aka Shadow underscore Trooper, he actually donated uh, the actual amount needed to be able to get what I needed. So, for the front wire, of course, of this little bad boy right here, because this g, &G combat machine is front wired, I was able to acquire a new peck box unit. Well, peck box is a... Uh, broad term because this is technically a battery box but it is got issues with the matrix peck box battery because it's, it's a bit big for this and it's kind of squishered on one side of the peck box but it does work it is actually on there very good and again i can still run that but um again one of those things of i have to figure out a way to make this not yeah so I may open the so I may be opening this up and dremeling out a lot of pieces or taking out a lot of pieces to help make sure the battery actually stays in place and actually isn't going to catch fire. But I will be looking at other Peckbach units for batteries and actually seeing which ones are good for uh, what I need. So yes, moving on though away from the Peckbach unit, go to the grand biggie, the one that I was able to acquire thanks to my buddy Merck. And this, of course, is a Tracer unit and Tracer BBs. The Tracer unit is one that I actually found through Captain Xavier, a Tracer unit that not only is able to do Nerf, but also Gel Ball and Airsoft. A 3-in-1 Tracer unit is not an easy thing to find. And I am very much so happy to have found this, and I am probably going to be looking at more Tracer units that Captain Xavier has re reviewed and actually get them in, so I may check these. The reason I got this is not just because of the artwork, but uh, also the way it's designed as well. It is, of course, the T238 Tracer unit. This is, once again, for Nerf and Gel Ball and Airsoft. I have the Airsoft 14mm negative threaded uh, adapter on there. But again, the cool thing is that this has three modes. The first mode is both tracer unit and muzzle flash. Second mode, just the tracer unit. And finally, just the muzzle flash. And holding it down, it powers down. And again, this is actually a really cool unit. I'm not lying on that. It is very intuitive, very nice. It's legit, very well thought out. It's not bad. It's legit a cool little unit. And I, honest to God, cannot wait to try this out because, again, it is one of those things of... I just can't wait to try it out, legitimately. It is just that cool. So, yeah, again, it, it's one of those things of, I can't wait to try this out. I cannot wait to see how this performs. Legit, I am excited for this thing. And again, because I saw it on Captain Xavier, and the way it's designed, the three barrel, th I, I, just, I just cannot wait to try this tracer unit out. But I don't have a tracer unit without tracer BBs. That's, again, where Merc was able to help out with his donation that he did because these are the BBs I got thanks to the community who actually told me to actually go for these types of bio BBs that actually are good and are kind of underrated. So here they are. 
Bioshot 0.28. Yes, I decided to take your account, actually take people's advice into account and go with some heavier BBs. 0.28 biodegradable, 400, 4,500 babies. 4,500 babies. And these things actually do light up. Like, I, I took a tack light, went over them. They glowed for like a solid couple minutes. And that is actually really nice. So, yeah. Definitely yeah, going to be using these at the game when nighttime does roll in. And that's actually going to be kind of fun. Like, really fun. But aside from my primary gun, which is going to be mostly used at nighttime, you're obviously saying, what did I mean earlier by a daytime gun? Well, again, because there's still going to be daylight out for the game itself from 4 to, from four to 8, I need to actually look at a nighttime gun, a daytime gun, and so far the selections I have, minus of course the G3, I know you guys are looking at that G3, minus the G3, I've looked at the three guns I actually do have that I want to take, but I can't decide which ones I want to take for this Saturday's game, or again, for the game in general, because a lot has been updated and there's there may not be a game May 6th. Maybe. I don't know yet. We don't know yet. We're still waiting on how the weather's going to be for the first weekend of May. So, here are the selections you have to voice. The first option, of course, is my Magpul PTS Colt M4 with, of course, the tough rails. I love this thing. I legitimately do. It is a fun little gun to get. It is fully licensed Colt logos all over the thing. Again, basic M4, lots of fun probably to have. The second option is actually a bullpup. And as much as people want to groan and moan about bullpups, this one is one I've actually, I actually legitimately do love, and it's the first generation of this particular bullpup. So, of course, let me introduce it to you. The second option that you guys can vote on is, of course, the SRU bullpup kit. It has a 10 inch barrel which is now very flushed with the flash hider of course which again that just gives it that lovely lovely little look and the fact that this is a scar style flash hider meaning I can actually screw on a suppressor lots of fun to be had with it and it is very much so now with that green with this weathered green look it just looks very lovely very sci-fi very very good and of course can accept AR magazine so again that's the other option I have that I can take of course to the game the last option is one you don't see a lot of on the field and that is of course my tactical tuna the FN 2000 this is a AEG bullpup and is a little finicky with the magazines it can accept so basically I'll be running high caps with this thing, or at least one of the many high caps. It, it'll take stenag mags just fine. Anything else, you're going to be having issues, because it is very finicky on the types of magazines that it can take. So, yeah. This thing, definitely going to be a challenge for me, but uh, one I am more than willing to take. But again, this is one of the three options that I will be basically putting up for vote, in the community tab so you guys go ahead go vote for what my daytime gun shall be and more or less what I will be again rocking in the daytime at Tupelo Airsoft Club. Now as for my sidearm this one no-brainer the primary sidearm I have that is going to be going with me of course is the H&K USP non blowback. Uh, the last CO2 I technically brought there was, of course, the the last Black Ops high cap I have, and that thing was not giving was was basically giving me issues, and I was not happy with it. So that one is going to be one of those guns that I'm going to have to look at. But non blowbacks for some reason have never given me issues, no troubles whatsoever. So I will be taking this one with me as my well my sidearm, which I will be having on my belt. Uh, with the M12 holster, not the drop leg this time, just straight up holster right here. Because again, as much as I love the drop leg, the drop leg system, 
Not using it. So, yeah, there's that. But, ladies and gentlemen, moving on, of course, to the cameras I'll be taking. The cameras I'll be taking to the game itself, not only, of course, is my run cam, which is my zoom cam, but also my finicky GoPro as well. But the camera I might actually change out for the selfie cam is, of course, the, well, the sports DV camera, this thing, which actually has worked, did work through the entire first game I took it to. So this actually might be a camera I'll be taking. Uh, but again, it could, again, I'll figure out something with the GoPro here or, or at least something to do with the GoPro. Because again, I'm, again, I'm not upset at the fact this thing failed on me. I am upset at the fact that the battery on this thing is being shoddy as hell. So, yeah, I, I am just, it's one of those things. That's, that's all it is. It is one of those things I am not very happy about. But, that's just how it is. <sighs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, as always, I've been Airsoft Al, and I hope you actually do like the loadout. I hope you vote for what my daytime gun is going to be uh, versus my nighttime gun. And again, as always, ladies and gentlemen, I've been Airsoft Al, and if you want to help out with future projects and future builds or even helping us acquire new stuff, more BBs, gas, anything of that nature, consider donating to either the PayPal or the Cash App down below. Because it's folks like Merc, aka Shadow underscore Trooper, who actually makes what we do here possible. And I will probably be doing a video talking about exactly the goals we have for each month. Or maybe I will be doing that. Let me know in the comment section down below if that's what you want me to do, is kind of talk about you know the goals we've reached so far and sort of what our goal for each month is in terms of like you know, how much we want to save up and kind of put uh, into stuff. Uh, let me know in the comment section down below if you want me to do that. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to help out in acquiring one of our goals, which is a small one, but is a simple one, which of course is the Nuka-Cola, ne well not Nuka-Cola, my bad, my bad. I mean the Fallout neon light sign that will go right here where the SR blueprints are going to be then please consider donating to the PayPal and Cash App down below. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, I've been Airsoft Al, and I shall see all of you at Tupelo Airsoft Club's Imperial Star Wars game, which is pinned in the comment down below, the event page. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you in the next one. Till next time.